it's, uh, it's been a long journey and, uh, and the journey continues. Um, it started back um, when I was uh, in New Jersey and uh, uh, we were just looking for uh, paint for my, one of my apartments in Ridgefield Park. And when we stopped to get this paint at this particular paint store, um, I went in, got the paint, got a paintbrush, a few other things, and right next to the paint store, in a place called Guttenberg, uh, there was an Aikido school. And uh, uh, <laughs> as, as uh, serendipitous as it was, uh, the door on the school, it was mid-afternoon, -af was ajar and open. There was a door stopper there, and uh, I just out of curiosity, walked up, knocked on the door, a voice said, come in, and I walked in and I met Mr. Bo. And uh, there, was no, there was no long discussion about anything. He just uh, impressed me. I asked him about training and things. And he gave me enough, just the cursory information. And uh, I actually uh, uh, left a, uh, a deposit and, and uh, signed an application form and arrived back at the car to my wife's surprise with the can of paint, the, the brush, and this application to train in martial arts. Uh, this happened in 1969, early 1969. Um, that was the beginning. I'd like to tell you a, you know, a better story, but that's the truth. So um, I don't know. You know it, <laughs> it's hard to think back that far. And, uh, I, you know, when students ask me questions like that, what, what prompted your training uh, and so forth, and, uh, and, and then they want, they want some kind of insight into uh, some deep philosophy or, or uh, an expression of commitment uh, that would be inspiring to them and so forth. I can, I suppose I can do that, but, um, you know, how do you do that and not sound so full of yourself or a little, a little, a little grandiose? But I'll, I'll attempt at giving at least an answer. Uh, one, of the, one of the interesting things is that when I was first training, like all young men and young fathers, uh, my daughter was just uh, an infant, and uh, I guess, especially at that age, uh, you know, we, no matter what era you brought up, whether, you know, I was a baby boomer, it doesn't matter whether you're a, a millennial, a generation Xer, or whatever. Uh, especially when you're younger, uh, life comes at you pretty hard and pretty, and pretty fast. So we, we all get caught up in our, in our angst over supporting family, finding the correct career, uh, paying bills, everything you can imagine. And, uh, and, I, and I say this because when asked what, what was my purpose on training, it, it, it's complex. It's not just about self-defense. I get students all the time that come and ask me that, about training and they want to train you know, to defend themselves and so forth and so on. Uh, that's only part of it. Uh, the concept of self-defense and finding someone who you trust and, uh, and have confidence to help you along that journey of learning a particular martial art uh, is only part of it. What sustains students to continue training has got to include a variety of other things. One of them being, uh, at least for me, that my training was so different from anything else in my life uh, that it allowed me to have what I used to call selfish time, meaning a, a, a period of time, an hour and a half, twice a week, uh, because that's all I could do at the time, uh, away from work, family, all the concerns of life, and, and uh, that time was used to kind of clear my head, refocus, allowed me to, like a writer who, at the time, <laughs> there was no computers then, uh, at least not, not the kind we have today, uh, like a writer who left, uh, who, who left his, his, uh, 
his notes and, and wanted to think about more of his plot or an artist who leaves the easel, uh, you need time to kind of clear out your head. And I found that when I trained like that and I was away from my normal life, the training required so much focus and concentration. You cannot, you cannot train properly and expect to have any results if you don't leave the outside world outside. If you don't try to, when you come into the, the, the moment you walk through the door in a dojo, at least back then the dojos were different too, and that the, the dojos were, were kind of, you know, they were, they were not so as touchy-feely as they are today in many ways. Um, and I can be a, I, I can, I can, I can be a, uh, a person who can testify that all of us in the martial arts have had to adapt over the years depending on the clientele. Um, when we, when you enter the, the dojo, we are now exposed to a whole new world. The moment you take off your shoes, the moment you bow in, a whole different approach has to occur. You're no longer thinking about anything except the discipline of focusing on the task that's laid before you. You're, because it's, there's a certain risk element in martial arts or any kind of hands-on contact kind of engagement, there is a, an absolute essential need to be so directed and, and motivated to keep your attention always focused on what you're doing that literally, and, and as a result, you, you eliminate all those other thoughts, perhaps we, we could call them mundane, they're certainly important, but mon those mundane other thoughts that cloud your judgment, that, that befuddle you, that sometimes confuse you. And uh, in that dojo, when you come in, you, you take on a different persona. And, um, and the discipline of having to do that carries over back into your life. The interesting thing I thought was that I always left my training kind of refreshed, almost like I had gone to bed uh, to kind of, you know, instead of thinking about something, how many times have, you, have we all said, uh, I'm going to just, I'm just going to go to bed and think on it, so to speak, and, 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 uh, and have, it, and, and, and have a, a refreshed view in the morning. Well, in essence, when I trained and I left, I came out of there ready to tackle the same angst and troubles and thoughts and hopes and dreams that I had before I entered the dojo, but I, but I was refreshed. I was, I was renewed. I could look at them in a different way. So that's one aspect of when people ask me what sustains me. Uh, that was one aspect of it as a student. And, uh, and I don't know. I guess uh, I had had a little bit of exposure. I was always athletic. I had, I had uh, uh, run cross country when I was younger. I, I, uh, I, I, I boxed gold gloves. I, I, I wrestled in college. I, uh, I played tennis. I, a variety of athletics. So I had a little bit of athletic background and, uh, and I liked being physical. So it seemed to appeal to me that way also. Why that particular school? I didn't research it. It was strictly the luck of the draw. Uh, I, uh, I guess I found in my instructor, a uh, you know a sense of someone who who had um, a desire to teach an art that they believed in firmly and uh, and uh, you know how some people when you talk to them about any particular thing they do uh, they seem to convey such confidence and 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 a sincerity that you that you that you take it as a given that they have the skill and the ability uh, to help you achieve whatever it is you're looking for. This was the case in my meeting Mr. Bo. So that's the serendipity story of how I found the school. 
I know you'd rather hear a story like I was surrounded by a motorcycle gang and, and I, I decided to, you know, to have uh, some, <laughs> some, uh, some martial training to, to recoup or do, or, or, or do something and become, you know, like, like you see on TV, all these, all these revenge movies. None of this was, was ever in my mind. Um, and then when people ask me what sustains me, uh, even then, um, you know, we, we, I, could, I, I didn't have time to, uh, being a father, uh, working up two jobs. Back in those days, uh, you know, it took me seven years to move out of, out of apartments and ha into my own home. And uh, I had to work over three years, seven days a week, uh, to find the money to do all that. However, still, I trained twice a week, and uh, it was either on a Monday or Wednesday evening, or we did it on a Tuesday or Thursday. In those days, you didn't have these open classes and you know, kind of thing. It was very specific. Um, times, again, have changed. Um, if you were late, you weren't allowed to train. So, <laughs> and back in New York and New Jersey, uh, there's no parking lots to pull into. So you had to leave time. Every, every time you traveled, because of all the lights and traffic, you're talking about 45 minutes at least one way. Then you had to leave enough time to circle the, the streets and, uh, and find a parking space. Uh, I always used to joke about, I always felt like a vulture waiting, waiting for prey, and the prey was a, an empty space. Um, so you had to plan for all that and still uh, be on time in class uh, dressed and ready to go when the time began. So it, it led to a certain discipline. And I don't know. I know over the years, I've been doing this, as I say, for 46 plus years, and um, I've had students who thrive on that kind of discipline and focus and others that, that rebel against it from day one. Uh, some people just like being a rebel for no cause. Uh, I never did... I, I, I assumed that there was a rule for a reason, and I didn't have to kind of, you know, really dwell on it or wonder why. I, I, just, I accepted it, and, and I, think, I think in doing so, it helped me achieve the kind of uh, status and, and, uh, and training and skill that I did. In any case, uh, when, 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 again, people ask me what sustains me, um, I don't know. I guess you, when you when you come into a martial art and you come into a school, many students don't even know what to expect. You know, there's there's four there's four levels of learning really, and, and those levels are there is unconscious incompetence. That means all of us, no matter who we are, if we're unfamiliar with something, we don't even know what we don't know. Eventually, we move on to conscious incompetence. You're there for a while, holy cow, <laughs> it's amazing what I don't know. You move on further in the, in the learning process and you go into conscious competence. You know what you know, but you have to think about it. It's, it's, it, it's, it's a chore, it's work. And eventually when you're doing this for a very, very long time, whatever that is, in this case martial arts, um, it becomes unconscious competence. So I took to that. I, I don't know why, but I, uh, I enjoyed the discipline. I enjoyed the training. Um, over the years, I made, uh, I made some close friends with those I worked out with. And, uh, and um, that, was my, that was my role.